Hello first grade families. Welcome to the first grade sneak peek for the third quarter of the school year. We have several teachers who are here to break down some of the standards and targets that we will be teaching this quarter. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you need to look at the graphics included throughout this presentation or rewatch certain clips. Here are the standards for English Language Arts or ELA. This is a quick list of some of the learning targets for the third quarter. Ms. Wilkinson will help explain these targets and include some things you can do at home to help your child with ELA. Hello, my name is Ms. Wilkinson. I am a first grade teacher here at Roy Waldron Annex and I want to thank you for taking the time to hear about what your students are learning this third quarter. This time I'm going to highlight some key targets and things that we are learning in this third quarter in ELA and some ideas of how you can do these things at home. This quarter we're spending a lot of time on informational text and one of the big targets that we're looking at is using text features to help gather facts, specifically about birds. So I want to go over a couple of text features with you guys just so you kind of know what your student is learning at school. So I have a book here titled Birds and a title is a text feature that tells us what the text we're reading is mainly about. The next text feature I want to turn to is the table of contents. And a table of contents tells us where all the information is in our book. So I want to look for information about birds of prey. So I'm going to turn to page 20, according to my table of contents, to find out more about birds of prey. Now that I'm on page 20, I want to look right here at the top of the page where it says birds of prey. This is our heading, and a heading tells us what the text on this page is mostly about. Then I want to point out some pictures and photographs we have here, which are also text features that help us in our learning about birds of prey. And then down here at the bottom of our page, we have a caption, and a caption just tells us more about what the picture is showing us. A great way to practice this target at home is by having your student identify text features that they're seeing in their own books at home and then discussing what facts they learned from using those text features. In phonics this quarter, we are working on reading text with expression and trying to break free of that choppy reading and becoming more strong, fluent readers. We are continuing working on letter sounds, those long and short vowel sounds as well as breaking apart words and putting them back together. For example, cat, k, at, cat. Breaking that, saying that word, breaking it apart, and then putting it back together. We are continuing to decode those words and also write the words as we're matching those sounds to the letters. A great way to practice this at home is by practicing our weekly spelling words and our high frequency words. We are all so excited about these targets and are looking forward to what your student learns this quarter. Here are the standards for math for this quarter. This is a quick list of some of the learning targets for the third quarter for math. Ms. Watkins will help explain these targets and include some things you can do at home to help your child. Hi families, my name is Ms. Watkins and I am a first grade teacher. Today I'm going to be sharing some targets that we'll be learning in math this quarter and some ways that you can support your children at home. Last week we started learning about collecting data and graphing. Some ways you can support your student at home with this would be having your students come up with a survey question like, what is your favorite drink? Then have them decide on a few choices like juice, soda, water, milk. Have them survey a group of people at home and then record the results using tally marks. Then have them graph their results using bar graphs or pictographs. Then you're going to be able to use the data to compare word problems. So ask them questions like, how many more juice votes than milk votes were there? Then your students should be able to compare word problems involving addition and subtraction. So you could ask comparison questions like, if you had five crayons and I had two more than you, 
How many do I have? Use crayons, pencils, or whatever you have around the house to solve those problems. For the next couple weeks, we'll be learning about dividing circles and rectangles into halves and fourths. The way that they can practice this at home is by folding a piece of paper in half to create two equal halves and then folding it in half again to make equal fourths. When you're doing this, make sure to use words like half of, fourth of, a quarter of when describing the shapes that have been equally divided. Later on in the quarter, we're going to be practicing counting, reading, and writing numbers to 120. For them to truly understand this, it's important that they know in a two-digit number, the first digit is the tens place, and the second digit is the ones place. Then we're going to be going into comparing two-digit numbers. So for example, 54 equals five tens plus four ones. I know 54 is greater than 44 because 5 tens is more than 4 tens. Then they should be able to represent two digit numbers as an equation in more than one way. So for example, 53 equals 5 tens plus 3 ones. Or 53 equals 3 tens and 23 ones, etc. Later on in the quarter, we're going to be able to learn to add and subtract 10 from any two digit number, eventually being able to add and subtract multiples of 10 using strategies based on place value. So for example, to add 54 plus 10, think five tens and four ones. Add one more 10 to make six tens and four ones or 64. Then we're going to be adding two digit numbers to a one digit number using place value strategies. For example, 54 plus eight is four ones and eight ones to make 12 ones. Five tens and 12 ones is the same as 62. Lastly, we're gonna be able to use models at home by creating tens and ones t-chart so you can make a board that looks like a t-chart having tens on one side and then you could have ones on the other side then you guys could come up with a two digit number as your target number and then if you have a dice roll the dice place that number of sticks or whatever you have into the column on your board and keep rolling the number cube and adding sticks to the board so that when you have enough to make a 10, you can make a bundle by wrapping a rubber band around the popsicle sticks. Place the bundle in the tens column and keep rolling and adding sticks to your board until you reach your target number. This will help a lot with place value, which is extremely important. And I hope these were some ways that you can support your children at home. Thanks. Here are the standards for science and social studies. This is a quick list of some of the learning targets for the third quarter for science and social studies. Ms. Hicks will help explain these targets and include some things you can do at home to help your child with science and social studies. Hello families, I'm Ms. Hicks. I'm one of the first grade teachers and I'm going to talk with you about our themes and standards for first grade science and social studies. Um, we've gone over some already for our third nine weeks, such as maps, and we've been talking about um, plant life, but it, you can still reinforce that by having them draw a picture of a park and labeling like maybe where they um, can find the playground or where the basketball court is, or maybe label a house that they would like to build, draw a map of that, or something else that you can um, help them with is just making a key to, know, to show where each thing is on their map. Um, as I said, we've already discussed that for the third nine weeks, but you can reinforce that. Also, um, as I said, we have started talking about plant life, the structure of the plant, the function of the parts, um, how 
we can help our environment with these plants. We've talked a little bit about what plants need and the life cycle of a plant. And one of the things that we've not done yet, which I'm excited to do, is um, showing the kids, you know, just take, and you can do this at home too, and um, take a cup, a clear one like this preferably, and just put some soil in there and select some sort of seed. And you can buy a pack of seeds at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. Um, they'll be putting those out soon if they haven't already. Um, but I have some that I've used in the past. This is just, you know, some sunflower seeds which um, this helps them to have that hands-on experience and support them in learning those standards about what um, you need to grow a flower or a fruit or vegetable. And they can watch as the seeds um, start growing their roots. Um, and if you're not able to do that, uh, maybe you just have like a cupcake um, holder and you can use a spoon and you can put that in there and have you um, just um, a plant, a flower. And if you have construction paper or any kind of paper, they can glue that on there and then label the parts. And that just helps refresh their memory, gives them more hands-on practice of what the plant parts are. And then you can just point to one of them. You know, what is the function of the the roots how does that help the plant what what's important about the leaf you know how what is the stem for and one of the other things that we will be doing soon in February is we'll be talking about President's Day and why we have that day off. And some of you may have already seen these lovely um, weekly stu these studies weekly that we send home. Um, they have activities on the back. This is another way to keep them engaged and asking them questions. Um, also, this is good practice for them uh, to read. We also will be talking about uh, the classifying plants. Whenever we uh, look at a plant, you know, is this something that you might find in the forest? Is this something that you would find in a desert? And why that's important to know. And we're gonna look at what good citizenship means and what rules and laws are. And this is some of what we touched at at the touched on at the very beginning of the year, but we're gonna come back and revisit that like we do a lot of our standards. Um, we'll also talk about our government. Mm, it's kind of, can you see that? Um, it's my government book and we'll be doing this in class. We'll talk about who our local government officials are. And so we're coming back and reinforcing that again. And so we would love to have your help in reinforcing these science standards and these um, got, uh, social studies standards and just incorporating it all together so that we can help them to be strong learners, to be learners for life. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our presentation. We hope that it was helpful and that our students' parents have a good understanding of the expectations of first grade during the third quarter. If you have any questions, please reach out to your child's teacher on Class Dojo. Thank you again for watching our third quarter sneak peek.